My name is Kevin Kasner, and um, I want to tell you a little story about the barn. In 2003, I was 43 years old. A friend of mine, best friend that was in my wedding, Dan Mulder, I want to make sure I get his name out there, uh, he told me about a group study kind of thing that they were doing at church. And uh, it was on a book called Wild at Heart. I never heard of it before. I've been putting so much pressure on myself to perform in this thing called Christianity. And I had looked the right way. I learned how to say the right things. And, um, and, and, and the things that I was saying are true, but they weren't there. My life wasn't a practical application of them. So uh, I read this book and, and uh, there was one thing in there that the author talked about was talking about his son chewing graham crackers into the shape of guns at the breakfast table. Well, my son did that, you know, and I was like, what? And I go to this, I don't know why they call them retreat. It really should be called an advance um, because I felt like that it was a catalyst in my Christian walk with Jesus that um, is, is still in a process today but it was definitely a trail marker in my life. Um, 350 men, ages 18 to 70 something. And I don't know if a lot of people will understand this or not, but it was the most non-religious Christian event I'd ever been to in my life. And it lanced my heart. And um, it was raw, it was extremely relevant and it was so authentic and it was modeled in a way to where I saw something on that stage that I really wanted and it was community it was relationships it was friends it was guys not walking alone and I didn't know really what was going on um, in my life at that point in time but I knew I knew I wanted more than I had I knew that I needed to do something with this, and um, I wanted to do something with this. And my brother-in-law had uh, this barn uh, in Indian Land, South Carolina. We call it the ultimate man cave. And it's got the neon beer signs and the pool table, pinball machine, and deer heads and license plates. And, you know, it's a place to where you kind of come in and you just kind of take a deep breath and say, huh, huh, what's going on here? And so in March of 2005, um, I just kind of really wanted to go further with this message of the heart. The Bible says to him who wants a friend, he must first show himself friendly. And so we started this DVD series that um, Ransom Heart Ministries puts out. And it was... Uh, about eight guys and myself meeting right here where we are today in this living room is what we call it. And I told the Lord at the very beginning, I said, God, you know, if it's just you and me here, I'm okay with that. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm really going by the seat of my riches here, but I know that I'm supposed to do this. And you know, the, the, I think it was the enemy who started saying, man, what are you doing? Who do you think you are? These guys aren't interested in what you're doing or, you know, God's not in this. And, uh, and I can't remember exactly when, but at some point, either on like the second or the third time that we were launching out in this series, we were getting ready to start it. And I'll never forget where I was. I was driving in the car right over close to Valentine here. And uh, I, get, I get a phone call from this guy and he says, hey, you don't know me, uh, but my name is Haynes Maxwell and I heard about some guys meeting in a barn and I was wondering if I could come and invite myself. So I called him back and said, sure man, come, come on. <laughs> I guess I just showed up. <laughs> well, Tom and I were recruiting it for a men's retreat and a fellow we'd never met before showed up and said, hey, do you guys know the book Wild at Heart? And we said, yeah, we love that book. He said, have you ever seen the video series? I said, I, I'm not sure I even knew there was a video series. So the guy starts writing, hint, tears off the bottom of his bulletin or something and gives me a phone number. He said, call this guy Kevin. He's south of Ballantyne. He meets with a bunch of guys in a barn and he's doing the Wild at Heart video series. 
So the guy walked away and I turned to Tom and said, did you know that guy? He said, I've never seen that guy before in my life. We, we didn't think he was an angel. We just didn't know what was going on. So I told Tom, I said, I, I'll go, but I'm not going by myself. I'm not going out to South Carolina to a barn. With, I'm just, so I called Kevin and kind of invited myself. Um, and what, what's been stunning is every Tuesday night, um, men show up from 15 different churches or so. We don't really do much about counting, but every once in a while we take a poll and, um, and connect with other men. And I told my pastor uh, a couple years ago, I said, I said, I don't know what iron sharpens iron is, but I know it's not sitting in a pew listening to you preach. Now, I love my pastor, but I didn't, I didn't know if he was going to smack me right then. But he looked at me and said, well, you get it. You get it. And, and, and we believe wholeheartedly that the local church is foundational in what God is doing in the body of Christ. We do. We're all, most everybody here is a part of the local church. Yet we know that sitting in a pew is, is not what God has called us to do. So what's been wonderful that happens here, it happens in Chick-fil-A's and Panera. I mean, we've all seen groups of men, and I believe God is stirring up men. Every time I look, I hear of another group of men that are saying, man, we, we need to get real with God and real with each other. And that, that's what I, I love about Kevin's heart and, and what we're doing here. It's just a bunch of guys. We, we joke saying we don't know what we're doing, but we're just getting men together. Or we're using material like Wild at Heart and other things just to, to encourage men. And every week, I, sometimes I go home uh, with uh, tears in my eyes and driving in my car after hearing stories of men where the light bulb comes on, whether it's dealing with pornography or dealing with anger or I'm driven to make money or what, whatever. It's all the same. It's my heart is going for something other than God. But the, when guys start hearing the stories of other men and they go, wow, I thought it was just me, but I'm not the only one. And God, there's something, there's something about, uh, I guess it's in James, confess your faults or your sins one to another yeah. that you might be healed. There's some... There's something, I don't understand it, there's something that God does when His people say, hey, this is what's true and I need help.